something I'm really passionate about teaching students and uh, my, my peers is that you can actually create your own experience. So if you ever applied for a job or I guess a few of you might be applying to placements or graduate schemes, um, a lot of the time before I started PLM or even still now, I'll get messages like, oh, you're a great candidate, but we want someone with more experience. And it can be easy to assume that experience only comes from having a job. And um, there's actually a lot more options, which I'll get in um, that I will explore with you today for this evening. Um, so yeah, this is me, I am Sophie. Um, I'm 24, as I mentioned, I'm a third year marketing, advertising and branding student. And um, I started PLM last June. So um, one Sunday, I was really frustrated at Google. Um, I was looking for words not to use on my CV, just looking for words that are an immediate turn off for employers, anything that might be annoying or overused. And um, every single um, Google page, every single blog post said different things. And um, I just remember thinking to myself, as a student, as mentioned, it's hard enough. It shouldn't be made even harder. Um, so I kind of set out on a mission to create a place that A, makes it easier for everyone else, um, and B, gains some experience in the meantime. And that's exactly what I've done. Um, I actually had a job interview the other day. Um, I didn't get the job, but that's OK. It's cool. We, we move. Um, and they, they mentioned that they thought it was really impressive how I've used this last seven to eight months really proactively and productively, um, not relying on other sources to gain experience or upskill myself, but actually um, I've kind of taken it on myself. Um, so I think gaining your own experience is not just obviously great for upskilling yourself, learning new things, putting your existing skills into practice. Um, but actually employers, they want someone proactive. They want someone who um, wants to learn more. And that is exactly what um, gaining your own experience can help you do. So why should I spend my time making my own experience? So I was talking with Jess before we begun um, and she kind of mentioned that she started like her own blog or her own page alongside university and, um, and asked how how much time this takes so on PLM I post every day across three platforms um, I do things almost every evening um, I don't make a lot of income from PLM that's not really my mission anyway so that's cool um, but yeah I do all these things when I could be watching Bridgerton or <laughs> watching something else on Netflix or just chilling out or having a FaceTime with my friends um, and I think there's a lot of reasons why I choose to make my own experience over these things um, so I've listed a few here. The top one being that the job market is becoming increasingly competitive. So to graduate university with nothing under your belt other than a degree. Um, although a degree is incredibly impressive, it teaches you great skills and um, you should be proud of yourself, you know, getting your degree soon or not so soon if you're in your first or second years. Um, I feel like sadly, it just might not be enough anymore in these big companies when you're in a big pond with big fish. Um, so spending your time doing other things, which I'll get on to, um, just helps you stand out. Um, secondly, it might help you find something you love. Um, so PLM, I <laughs> spent 80% of my time working on. Um, and in the meantime, it started as somewhere to help people or somewhere to kind of build a portfolio. Um, but actually, I've made so many friends. I've gained so much experience. I've built a huge network and I've just completely fell in love with social media and content creation. So, yeah, in the meantime, you might find a new passion. Um, as alluded to, it really does help you stand out. I will get onto some examples in the next few slides. Um, but just being able to show employers that you use your time wisely, that you are invested in your future and that you spend time making yourself a better employee or a better um, marketing professional, um, I think really is impressive to them, um, especially as a young person. It helps you build your personal brand. And um, so if you're not familiar with personal branding, um, in short, um, because this could be a whole hour conversation in itself, um, personal branding is essentially what people say about you when you're not there. Or um, a question I've been asked when learning about personal branding is what do you want to be known for? So your personal brand is exactly that. Um, I'm sure a lot of you have learned about branding in modules. Um, so the way that a company brands itself is, um, is similar, but obviously you do it for yourself because it's your personal brand. Um, and to end this slide, it really is just a good use of your spare time. I think at the start of your career, um, even before your career begins at university, it's really important that you know you're getting yourself ready. Um, 
I can only speak for my university. Uh, isn't great in the careers department. Um, I know a lot of universities are much better than mine, so um, that is good on you or good on them. Um, but yeah, I cannot rely on my university or my employer or potential employers to upskill myself. It's something that, um, yeah, you can take into your own hands. So, so we definitely should. So what um, gaining your own experience or building your own experience helps you do is think, okay, where am I now? Um, I'm a student. I want to learn more about this. I wish I knew this. Um, and then what you can do is think it in the future and you say, okay, where do I want to be? So for me, um, my dream is to work in social media management or um, in a socials department. Okay, so here I am now as a student. This is where I want to be. How can I get there? And not how can I get there in that where should I apply for a job? But actually, what does it take to be a social media manager? What skills do they need? What, um, what content creating tools do they use? Those sort of things. And then what you can do is spend your spare time slowly building up these skills, um, gaining experience, gaining knowledge. And then when you do come to graduate, you've already got all of these tools under your belt um, that you can use to get to here where you want to be. So as kind of mentioned in the last slide, um, you can rely on professional experience, corporate companies or your university to provide you with the opportunities, encouragement and skills needed to get you to where you want to be. I think ultimately success comes from you um, and a drive and passion within yourself to do more and be better um, both, per per both personally and professionally. So how? Cool, like we want to build our own experience. That sounds cool, Sophie, that's something I want to do. Um, but how do I do that? Um, I think there is three ways that you can do this. So number one is to upskill yourself. Number two is to build your portfolio. And number three is to reach out and essentially create your own opportunities. So number one is upskill. So to upskill is simply to learn new things, to enhance your knowledge, um, or kind of just increase your understanding on a skill that you already have. Um, so by a skill, I mean it could be soft skills. So by soft skills, I mean skills that you already have. So communication, time management, um, negotiation skills, things that you kind of personally possess, um, and also hard skills. So what hard skills are are things that you are taught. So it might be using Photoshop or um, after Effects for video editing, or maybe you use MailChimp for email marketing. So you can upskill yourself in both of these ways. Um, a great way that I've kind of utilized um, upskilling over the last eight months is by doing online courses. It sounds really boring, um, but actually some of them are quite fun. Um, HubSpot, I will email Jess actually afterwards or message you on LinkedIn, Jess. Um, just a list of some good um, online courses and resources that I really recommend. Um, so HubSpot, which is, yeah, lovely. Um, so HubSpot, which is just H-U-B-S-P-O-T, um, have some really great courses and they're all completely free. Um, so I've done courses on content marketing, email marketing, social media marketing, all of these things that my degree has covered, but not as in-depth as I would like them to be. The great thing about online courses too is that typically you get a certificate at the end and um, which you can pop on your CV or you can pop on your LinkedIn um, and it just shows employers like hey this is what I do in my spare time um, this is what I've been up to I've been learning about these things um, and it could actually be the difference between you and another candidate you never know so HubSpot have some really good ones and there are also videos as well, so you don't have to sit and read for ages. Um, I know that I definitely wouldn't participate if that was, um, if I had to do that. But yeah, you can literally just pop on the videos, take some notes, um, and away you go. Um, another great way to upskill yourself is by webinars. So like things like this, um, places like, oh, I can't remember what it's called. Again, I will send this to Jess to kind of distribute, but there is a company um, who actually hosts a lot of free webinars surrounding CVs, um, surrounding uh, cover letters, how to use LinkedIn. Um, resources like that are just really helpful to get you started. Um, and finally, social media. I talk a lot on PLM about um, how I use TikTok and YouTube to learn more about marketing, and which sounds like a really way, um, a really boring way <laughs> to use the platforms. 
Um, but actually it's the easy, it's so easy. Um, so for example, while I'm having my breakfast, I might just pop on a YouTube video about paid media, um, which is like Facebook advertising, Google ads, all that sort of thing. Um, it's just a 10 minute video. Um, and in this 10 minutes, I've actually learned a lot. Um, you don't even have to listen completely. You can kind of get on with other tasks around the house or around your apartment whilst listening. Um, but it's a great way to just build a really great base knowledge on certain things. Um, especially, for example, I have recently got really interested in email marketing. Um, and I would love to kind of keep that door open as a potential career. Um, so what I've been doing recently is just typing into YouTube like email marketing tips or simply just email marketing, seeing who comes up, um, popping it on, you know, taking notes if you want to, scrolling through Facebook or Instagram if you don't want to listen too intensely. Um, there really is a wealth of resources out there. It's just a case of using them. Um, and like a 10 minute video on email marketing is possibly not as fun, um, but it's much more beneficial to my future than like an ASOS haul or watching someone do their makeup. Although those are great videos that I thoroughly enjoy. Um, so Instagram as well, places like PLM, there are so many um, great career resources on Instagram marketing accounts that if you literally just search marketing or social media marketing into the search bar, um, you'll likely find a couple. So it's just kind of incorporating little things into your day and that help you learn a new thing. It doesn't have to be eight hours out of your day. A lot of the online courses I mentioned as well are only four hours um, and you don't have to do them all in one go. So if you want to do 30 week for a month, um, that is easy. That is so easy. That's shorter than a Netflix movie. That's shorter than an episode of your favorite TV show. And um, you've learned something new and got something new to put on your CV. So number two is to build your portfolio. So um, by that, I mean kind of build your CV. So in COVID times um, and with a very saturated job market, sometimes you just have to do it yourself. Um, I worked in an agency for 10 months last year and now I've been freelancing as a social, social media manager since. Um, and I am one of many students to have direct marketing experience before graduating. Um, I feel very lucky and I know a lot of people aren't as lucky to have found something so flexible um, within direct reach of where they want to be upon graduating. Um, so without that experience, I feel like I wouldn't be in the position I am now to apply for graduate schemes confidently. Um, so these are a few ways that I recommend building your own portfolio. So if you are looking for a part-time job, job in marketing right now and can't find anything, um, it doesn't mean that you can, you know, boost your CV, boost your LinkedIn, learn something new. Um, and honestly, these are so simple. So start a blog. That is exactly what I've done with PLM. Um, and it's gained me opportunities to guest lecture around the UK, virtually, of course. Um, it's gained me opportunities to write an ebook, to um, do loads of things, loads of really cool things I would never have got to have done if I never just started an Instagram page. Um, and honestly, it's as simple as making something that's called Sophie's Marketing Blog. It can be really easy, posting twice a week. Um, you could post on marketing news or like what you're learning at uni. Um, I follow a lot of girls and boys who, who do that, who just use Instagram as a portfolio to share their knowledge. Um, but what that does actually is not only show your knowledge to employers, give them a place to visit when they see your CV, but it helps you build your skills again. Um, so just using Instagram as an example, so I started PLM on Instagram, um, I've learned all about paid ads, I've learned how to use hashtags, how to write good copy, by copy I mean my captions and the like infographics I create, it's taught me really great graphic design skills, it's taught me how to communicate, it's taught me how to engage an audience, it's taught me all of these things that actually are going to be so beneficial when I graduate and really help me get a job. Um, similarly, start a podcast. Why not? It is as easy as recording something on your phone, uploading it to Spotify, making a name, creating a logo on Canva, which is a free graphic design tool. Um, and away you go. That's it. Share it with your friends, share it on LinkedIn. Um, and yeah, again, great skills. Sending a newsletter. Um, so if you're not familiar with what a newsletter is, um, it's just kind of an email that you can send monthly or weekly that goes directly to people's inboxes it's just an email um, but that will teach you great um, commercial awareness skills so keeping up with industry trends um, it shows that you have great email marketing skills um, similarly grow on TikTok 
it sounds so silly, it sounds so simple, start on Instagram, post on LinkedIn, all of these things. But what they're doing is teaching you really valuable skills. Um, so growing on TikTok, you'll need to understand your target audience, you'll understand how to organize your time, manage your time, you'll understand how to create video content, which is all the rage in 2021 marketing. Um, so honestly, as simple as that, and what you're doing is building your portfolio, boosting your CV. I've actually, I say employed, I've like br brought on a volunteer to my team um, to manage my Facebook group, so my Facebook community. And um, what I looked for was someone doing these things as simple as oh, I've grown an audience of 200 on TikTok by posting twice a week about marketing. That's it. And I've been looking for someone who brings that because it shows that they're proactive in their spare time, that they're passionate about marketing, not just as a degree, but outside of them. So really simple ways to actually gain some great experience. And lastly, I think this is my last point is to reach out. Um, so I actually got a job a few years back through asking for it um, and it's not rude it's not rude at all um, but yeah don't wait for an opportunity to come to you go and get it pop an email dm message on linkedin and um, one thing i always recommend to my plm like girls and boys is um social media experience specifically there are thousands of small businesses on instagram on etsy on facebook who likely have no idea what they're doing um, it, reach out to them. Hey, I'm Sophie. I'm a third year student. Um, I'm really interested in gaining some social media experience. Would you be interested in me volunteering for you two days a week or committing six hours a week to um, writing your posts and your copy and growing your audience? Who's going to say no to that? You know, small business owners have a lot to do. So someone to take that off their plate is probably a really attractive offer. Um, but again, if you don't ask, you really don't get um, another way that I find really, um, really helpful is utilizing LinkedIn. So a lot of you probably think that's boring. LinkedIn is scary. Um, it is, it is scary, but um, it's a whole network of people that you can utilize and, you know, really um, use to get ahead. Um, I have spoken to people from all of my dream employers. So I've spoken to people at L'Oreal, at Gymshark. I've interviewed a guy from Gymshark who actually heads the team that I would love to work at one day. Um, and it's all through LinkedIn, through being brave enough to drop them a message and saying, hey, I would love a 20 minute Zoom just to talk about what you do. I'm a student, I'm trying to grow my network. I'm trying to learn more. Um, do you have time Wednesday at 5 p.m.? or messaging and saying, hey, I'm Sophie, I'm a third year student. I graduate in three months. I'm hoping to get into social media management. I see you're working at Gymshark again, for example. I would love to ask you two questions on how you got the job and how you'd recommend I stand out. It's honestly as simple as that. Um, a lot of the time people won't come back with a horrible response. The worst thing that can happen is that they'll just ignore it. They might be too busy. And uh, what matters is you tried and also you put your name out there so who knows potentially you could apply in two months two years six months and they might recognize your name so i don't think any any dm any email any linkedin message um is wasted so yeah if you don't ask you don't get so just to kind of highlight why this is important how it's helped me so my success in making my own experience so through pretty little marketer um which is on Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn, and there's a Facebook group. So across all four of those platforms, I've gained social media experience, graphic design, networking, public speaking, community engagement, organization, analytical thinking, and that list could go on. And those are all things that I can list on my CV to make me really stand out. And all of these are skills that you would work, you would learn in the workplace but actually what you've done is taken that into your own hands and said no i'm not going to wait till i graduate i'm not going to wait till i get a placement i'm going to do it now um posting on linkedin so i absolutely obsessed with linkedin um so just even simply posting once a week twice a week about what you're up to or what you've learned at uni or this morning for example i posted a little thing about asos buying topshop and my thoughts surrounding it as simple as that but what's it done is what it's done has built me a network i've gained opportunities i put my name out there so potentially when i apply for jobs they might see my name and think oh i've seen her on linkedin um and again it's also building my personal brand one thing that i've tried to do since last june 
Um, so last June is when I set up PLM and since then I've kind of been on a hunt to make my own experience. Um, is do one course a month. Um, literally it's four, out, four hours out of an entire month. I'm not entirely sure how many hours are in a month because I'm a marketer. I do not do maths, <laughs> I do creative things. Um, but four hours is absolutely nothing. That is what one Marvel movie or probably <laughs> like a whole series that you've binge, wa binge watched over the weekend. Um, I've learned about things like content marketing, email marketing, paid media, PPC, Google Analytics, all of these things that my degree have taught me but brushed over quite quickly because obviously there's a lot to learn. Um, so what you've done again is took your learning into your own hands and I actually had an interview again for my dream job in paid media. I didn't get the role because of a lack of experience in that specific area, which is fine. But I wouldn't have got the interview if I hadn't have done a four hour free course on um, on paid media. So it's definitely worth the time. Um, and all of the ones I've done have been free. So you're not paying anything. You're not giving anything to do them. Um, you're simply just taking four hours out of your month. It's super easy. Um, so that kind of wraps up everything that I wanted to cover. I didn't want to talk about too much because it's the evening. Um, yeah, so if there is any questions, feel free to pop them in the chat. Or if you do want to pop your mic on, anything like that, that's cool. Um, I'm just going to stop sharing my screen. Lovely. I was wondering, Sophie, if you, you have so like your job board that you post on or the the Facebook groups that you have. I didn't know if you want to as well. Sorry, my love. Um, it cut out a few times. I don't know if you want to repeat it or if you just want to pop it in the chat, it's up to you. I don't know if it's my Wi-Fi playing up again. Just have a sip of my water too. If anyone does have any other questions, just pop them in the chat. Or again, if you want to pop your camera on, on your mic on, or just your mic on and not your camera on, that's also cool. Um, yeah, any questions, really happy to answer anything. Yes, of course. Cool. Jess asked, do I want to share my screen and show people the resources that I have available? I can do that. Do you remember how to share my screen? Oh, goodness me. So I'll head to my website, actually. So in terms of PLM resources, um, I do have a little website. It is not very advanced at all, um, but I did try. Um, in terms of free resources, I do have two little eBooks. I've got a LinkedIn profile workbook that aims to talk you through every section of your LinkedIn profile and help you just make it cool. Um, and then a cover letter 101, which is like a three paid PDF that talks you through how to start writing a cover letter, how to proofread it and all of these things. Um, I can also show you the Instagram and the link tree in my bio. If it loads, I have very slow Wi-Fi, sadly. Um, so if you did want to find me, you can find me here on Instagram. Um, and following the link in my bio, um, there's actually a lot, there's a lot linked there. Um, specifically, just mentioned the closed Facebook group, so that is here. Um, it's a Facebook group of around 3,300 now, I think, and it's just a really great place where if you have a question, even I use it all the time, um, you've got 3,000 other people um, who can answer you. So that's a really great place to, um, to kind of chat and learn more. Also in the Facebook group, I have a job board, which I will also show you. Excuse all of my probably very random um, Google searches. <laughs> Um, but I also have created a job board that I aim to um, update weekly or two weekly. A lot of them are graduate roles. So if you are looking to graduate this year, it might be a good place to kind of hang out. Um, and that can be accessed through the Facebook group, which is accessed through the link in the bio on Instagram. Um, but yeah, and a few placements on there. Not too many because it's a bit of a struggle right now, isn't it? 
Um, but yeah, to answer, answer that for Jess, that's kind of where everything is. If you are interested, you can just head to the Instagram and then literally everything's in the bio, nice and easy. Um, so yeah, that's where I am. Um, sorry, I just wanted to say like, so did you say you did a placement for 10 weeks, was it? So I never did a placement actually, I didn't want to, um, but I worked in a marketing agency. Um, so I worked in a digital marketing agency for 10 months. So from uh, last February to November. Um, okay. Sadly, they had to let me go, which was rubbish. Um, but yeah, very grateful for the experience. Yeah. Did you apply through, um, so you mentioned that you messaged them on like LinkedIn and stuff. Did you do it like that way? Because I'm currently looking for a placement. So it's mm -hmm. quite a good idea of messaging them. Yeah, so I had actually seen the job advertised. So I saw it advertised on Indeed. Um, luckily, the agency was local. It literally is about 10 minutes that way from my house. That's cool. um, and I reached out via email and um, submitted, before I submitted a CV and covering letter, which is what they were asking for. Um, I just messaged them and asked a few questions like, hey, I'd love to know more about your company, about the role, um, just so you can kind of show your interest, show you're proactive. and. Um, I think it really helps stand out because a lot of people just submit the CV, submit the cover letter, and then like you're done, you just wait. Um, but actually taking the time to pop like a personalized email or a DM, I think is really special. Um, yeah, and the job, yeah, it was it was really enjoyable. And I actually got the role because they were really impressed from my email. So it all kind of ties together nicely. Oh, that's quite good then. All right, thank you. No problem, it's okay. Cool, we do have a little bit of time for any more. So if you do want to pop them in the chat or again, just pop your camera on. If you don't want to pop your camera on, which you might be in PJs or whatnot, then you could just pop your mic on. I'm um, happy to answer any cues you might have. Or software to use if you're new to maybe designing so that not a lot of people Sorry, it keeps cutting out. I don't know if it's me. Um, no, no, I'm sorry, Jess, we can't hear you. Can you type in the chat? It's all the Wi-Fi, it's all the, all the internet. Mine does it sometimes, sadly. I think the question, I'll wait for you to pop up in the chat, but I think it was around tools to use for like learning graphic design. Yeah, Maybe. I guess so, yeah. I think mm -hmm. that's what she, she meant. Cool, I'll answer that part of the question while I wait for you to pop it in the chat. Um, so I've just been using Canva, which I'll pop in the chat. It's literally just canva.com. Um, it's free. It does have a paid version, so you can pay like 10 99 a month, I think, but it's all like advanced features that you probably don't need. Um, I only pay because I use it for my freelance clients. Um, so I freelance as a social media manager in my spare time. Um, but honestly, it's it's really easy to use. The slideshow that you just saw, I created on Canva. Um, probably took me about 30 minutes, super easy. I've used it for assignments too, and it, you can make it look really flashy and really cool. Um, in terms of like more experience, more advanced um, graphic design, obviously Adobe. So Adobe Illustrator and Photoshop and too there might be a third one are widely used if you are looking to get into content creation or graphic design um canva is great but it's not really industry used um it's good for like instagram creating little things for your assignments but in terms of jobs um i'm not sure how recognized it is um you can get adobe i think as a student for 17 pound a month um so it is a little cheaper than the actual full package you might be able to get it cheaper through uni so it's definitely worth checking in terms of learning more, if you did want to start using Adobe or Adobe, I'm not sure how to say it. Um, YouTube, YouTube is the place that I spend a lot of my time um, when I try and learn things about um, Adobe. Um, so yeah, I would recommend Canva, um, although not widely recognized in terms of industry. Um, Adobe, obviously industry everywhere, everywhere in the world uses it and YouTube is a great place to learn about that. Um, if you're looking to learn a bit more about email marketing, which is getting a lot more popular um, and there's a lot more kind of, um, oh, Jess has popped a little thing in. Oh, that's different to what we'll talk about. I'll get to that too. Um, 
yeah, MailChimp is a good one if you're looking to learn a little bit more about email marketing or if you did want to spend some time setting up a newsletter or anything like that. Um, MailChimp, which is just, I'll put it in the chat again, just in case I say it wrong. MailChimp. So those three are good ones. Um, Nick has asked, how do you prepare yourself for interviews and are there any key traits you think are important to share with employers? I will just have a sip of my water and then I'll answer this up. Lovely, I am back. So, in terms of preparing for interviews, I will do three things. Um, it seems excessive, but I think um, interviews are the hardest part. And if you're not showing you're fit for the role, then you're not going to be picked at the end of the day. Um, so, what I will do is use the job description. So, the description that you use to apply for the job, the place where they're saying what they're looking for. As I will either print that off, or now I've moved into my own place, I don't have a printer, so I'll just do it on like um, Google Forms or what, Google uh, Docs um, and think, okay, so say there's five bullet points, they want someone who's done this, this, has this quality and this. And um, what I will do is next to it, right where I fit these. So even if I don't have the direct experience, for example, say they want someone with two years in sales, which I do not have, um, what I could do is right next to it, um, okay, what what does sales need? Sales need someone confident, who has good negotiation skills, that um, is good with people. So what I will do next is list experience examples of this, where I have achieved those skills. So I would list um, where I've showed good negotiation skills to where I've used great communication skills to like dissolve a situation. Um, so going through the job description and noting examples for each one. Um, the second thing I will do is extensively research the company. Um, by that, I mean what's in the news, um, what are their forecasts financially. I will head to LinkedIn, look at all of their, well, probably not all of them if they're a big company, but I'll look at their employee pages, what people are saying about the job, what have they done before getting the role, just so you can understand the company a bit more. A lot of their careers pages as well, so like L'Oreal, for example, have like l'oreal.com forward slash careers or something like that. Um, a lot of them on there will have stuff about their company values, the sort of people they look for, what's their culture like, all these sorts of things. Um, so preparing yourself to really understand the company and how you can fit. Um, and then finally, I actually have a post on my page, very shameless plug, um, it's not a plug, it's just a very helpful post, um, that lists nine um, very common interview questions and how to answer them. So I actually used that post in an interview last week, no, two weeks ago. Um, and just write my answers to each question. So what are your strengths? Okay, quickly write that down. What are my weaknesses? Write it down. Um, because then it means that before you go into that interview, you've got a few examples in the back of your mind. Of one, how you fit the job description. Two, your research on the company helps you consider how you would fit there and what kind of personality traits and characteristics you can show to show that you're a good fit. Um, and then finally, because you've kind of written the answers to questions you might have expected or might be expecting, um, it just means that you're you're nicely prepared. You've got some examples in the back of your head and you're ready to go. Um, in terms of key, key traits that you think are important to share with employers, um, I think everyone and their dog is passionate, creative and imaginative. So employers want people that think outside of the box. So I think being visionary is really important for employers nowadays. So by visionary, I mean people that look into the future, see the business vision and want to help them get there um, by thinking outside of the box. Um, I think that active learning, so everything we've kind of discussed this evening um, is really important. I think employers don't want people to turn up at nine, go home at five. They want people who invest in themselves. They want thought leaders, people that can take a challenge and give a challenge. Um, so yeah, I think showing that you are visionary and that, that you can see the future of the company and um, map out how they can get there. Um, and being proactive in what you're up to outside of university, outside of work, I think those two are really important. I'm um, just trying to think of anything else. Mm. I think those I think those would be my best answers. Um, but if anything else springs to mind, I will email them to Jess to tell you. Um, Jess has said, sorry, my Wi-Fi is awful. It's okay. Um, you recommended reaching out to brands and offering to do unpaid work. Um, how did you find the confidence to know your work would be good? Sorry, I'm awful reading. 
How did you find the confidence to know that your work would be correct and to a good standard if you haven't done it before? Um, I think being really strict with myself, so I am a perfectionist through and through. Um, so making sure that you have procedures in place that allow you not to fail. So um, in terms of good standards, okay. Um, yeah, speaking, okay, I'll go from the start because I'm confused myself with this answer. Um, so in terms of confidence, I think it, you just have to back yourself. If you're not confident yet in your skills practice, um, so what I used to do on Canva or on Adobe is make little passion projects. So make up a company and create a logo or create like a pretend Instagram page for them or um, ask, ask a friend or you can look online for like um, audience profiling or target consumer profiles and you could kind of sit back and think like make a marketing plan on how you can relate to them or how you could reach out to them or how like what sort of content would interest them. So I think having a baseline of um, social media experience, for example, um, is really important. So in terms of gaining and finding the confidence, just practice, even if it's a few hours on a Saturday. Um, again, YouTube channels. So Neil Patel is a really good one. And Vanessa Lau, which is NAU. She's really great too. Um, and just refining your knowledge. Um, and then, yeah, when you have that knowledge, you can kind of build a pitch or a portfolio. So I've made slide packs before, a slideshow that I've sent to clients and said, this is my work. Like, these are the passion projects I've created in my spare time. Um, I really believe that I could do this for you. I could do it X, Y, Z. Um, and yeah, in terms of good standard, I think as long as you understand you have a good level of transparency and communication so they understand what you can do and what you are willing to do for them and you understand what they want and the, and the kind of aims and objectives um, that they are hoping to get out of your service so i think having that level of transparency um, not going into it like um saying you can do more than you think you can or trying to make yourself like a lot better than you actually are um, turning up as you are, like, hey, I can do this. Um, this is what I can do for you. I'm just being really transparent. Um, so yeah, in terms of good work, making it correct and good standard, having a level of transparency and really good communication with you and the client. Um, and in terms of confidence, just practice. Practice makes perfect. I hope that answers the question. <laughs> You're welcome. Cool. Will you have a little bit of time? So any other questions, feel free. But if not, that's also that's also fab. So if no one has any other questions, then Sophie said she'll email me a lot of resources that I can pass on to you guys. That I'll post on the mm -hmm. group chats and the Facebook pages. And I'll also include the links to Sophie's website and the private group chats. And I know the group chats, they it just seems like a random thing. but. And I know for our year, we had this research project that was due in a little while ago and we had to do a massive survey and actually to get my responses, I ended up putting it in that Facebook page and so many mm -hmm. people responded and everyone's so lovely there. Oh, so thank you. Yeah, the Facebook group is the absolute best. You're all welcome to join. Um, it's just a really nice place to find other students and graduates who also have no idea what they're doing and we all just kind of want to help each other. So yeah, definitely have a little join if you're if you're looking for new friends. But yeah, if that's it from everyone, then we'll let you go and have a lovely evening. But thank you all for coming and we'll make sure to post the responses for you. And thank you to Sophie for doing this chat with us. It was really helpful. Oh, lovely. I'm glad it was helpful. Thank you all for having me. And yes, yes, I will pop you an email in the morning or DM or whatever is easiest. And um, yeah, just for a few resources to share. But yeah, thank you again for having me.